So we're going to be replacing one of the things that's uh, definitely wrong with this, which is the rear windshield wiper assembly. It is not working. Uh, rear windscreen. We're here. Windscreen wiper assembly is not working. So once those two screws are out, it doesn't look like there's a lot of a lot of pieces here to actually undo. Just a lot of clips by the looks of it. Bad. Just a little handle cover popped off, and we're just going to pull that down. A little bit more violent than I would have liked, but apparently this the way it wants to come apart. So now we're going to take it that way. I think that should slip right off. Right there is the windshield wiper motor assembly. So there's only one power connector that holds that on. Right. Pull that off. And that bolt looks pretty rusty. We're not too worried about what happens to the motor we're taking off because it is totally seized and we are replacing it. That arm is pretty stuck on there. Let's see if we can wiggle it a little bit. But again, the rust here, Canada, is always fun. We're going to try putting some penetrating oil on it. See if, uh, see if that solves it. So, side channels seems to be the solution to that. I do lubricate these things on a regular basis as a part of car maintenance. Uh, a lot of the vehicles that I own have never had a windshield wiper transmission assembly replacement or anything like that. Because quite simply, um, it's, not, it's not something that normally breaks if you continue to lubricate it. This particular one, you can actually see, move the camera here for a moment, you can actually see all of the all of the rust is actually caked up right in the pivot uh, with salt water and so forth. Um, again, a little bit of a little bit of preventative maintenance would have went a long way against uh, having this issue. A little bit of oil. That's been all it needed. Just do a little bit of back and forth here. Of course, you can put a deep socket on this uh, out of pure laziness. I decided to use the, the uh, channel locks that are in my hand. It's one of the things worth mentioning as well is that all the components I have in this car are actually pulled from the wrecker. So this is actually the process of pulling itself out. There we go. We got the old one out. And I always pull all the little odds and ends. So it looks like we have a cap that I will be able to repurpose for the one that broke. Let me know if, um, if you're, you guys are interested in seeing a trip to the wrecking yard here in Canada, uh, pulling parts in the winter, that type of thing. I'm gonna go ahead and run that just to make sure it's functional. Looks like we're we're back to, back up and working with the rear wiper motor again. So this part new aftermarket is approximately about hundred dollars on these on these Hyundai Elantra Tourings, and it's a common issue for them. And again, the other one was just seized right in the pivot. So I'm going to go ahead throw a little bit of oil in there. In the summer months, 
definitely, you know, this has never been taken apart. Even the one that I took off this car it was slightly newer. Um, and it's, it's definitely something I recommend throwing a pile of oil on, grease, e either way, silicone grease. If you have to pull off the rear wiper assembly and get that right and then put it back together again, um, definitely worthwhile. A little bit of oil and grease is nothing, uh, nothing compared to having to replace that. There's no reason why this car can't make it with 165,000 kilometers it has now to 300,000 kilometers. Just a little bit more maintenance. It was well maintained initially. Um, but the problem is the cost of maintenance and repairs. It almost makes sense for, for us to be doing this stuff ourselves. As you can see, this job is, is not a bad one for a do-it-yourselfer. That one, the, the, the rusty, rusty part is bad, but for people who are watching this in the, the United States, well, this might not be bad in the United States, but if it was, um, uh, it would be actually quite an easy part to change. Stop my glass from rusting. So that's excellent. All right, before we go and put anything else back together, uh, we're going to go ahead and start to think about putting the rear uh, wiper back on. I will test to make sure that it's not over the range of motion that it should be. Don't go too crazy on this bolt because that's a part of the reasons why why they are so difficult to come apart. All right, so that works a treat. I'm pretty happy with that overall. I think that, uh, that concludes the the rear wiper replacement. And again, we're going to keep that lubricated, make sure that it's not an issue moving forward. Unfortunately, I am on site today uh, and I did not bring all of my tools with me. So I'm working in a, a friend's garage, somebody who's, who's, uh, who's donated the space for the use of these videos because I am a proper peasant. I, I don't, unfortunately don't have a garage of my own that would be ideal for this type of activity. This just snaps together easily. There's no, uh, there's no magic here. This just goes up, up she goes, pops it back on. Put a little handle back in. A little cover back on. Put our screws in. And that concludes the reassembly of the, uh, the rear of the car. Not, uh, not too bad. A lot of guys out there are using powered screwdrivers. I will still prefer to use. Oops, I still prefer to use manual tools. Those uh, power tools make you do the job quicker, but uh, they don't necessarily make you do it better. If you're making a living doing this, absolutely makes a lot of sense. I'm trying to do videos that uh, that are more to what the DIY guy is trying to do in his garage. I'm just gonna give this a quick right. For now, that works. The car will be detailed after all this is completed. Rear hatch supports are working on this car, which is actually quite a bonus. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the rear, rear hatches on these cars um, have already started to, to sag and need those, those replaced. That's uh, a little loose, but will definitely pass safety. Will not be an issue. I don't use a rear wiper that much myself personally, but it has to be working. It's on the car, and it's a functional piece for visibility. They are now requ requiring for safety check, so we'll go ahead and do that. Next up for repair items, the emergency brake assembly. When you pull up on it, is no longer engaging its teeth. Uh, looks like the cables are good. 
but the actual emergency brake assembly itself has actually caused it to fail. Again, I pulled another used one at the record. Got one in really good shape. $213 part, new here locally in Canada. Uh, so very expensive. Um, they do fail. Uh, it's not, not uncommon. So we've got one that's brand new. Well, not brand new, but brand new to me. And you can see the lever is stuck. The button will not retract. And we will start. There are little bolts down here at the front of the console. Just little covers that just pop off. Pry this little cover up. <laughs> Don't pry it with this replaceable bit screwdriver. Don't do as I do, do as I say. I'm just going to go ahead and pry that up. Take off that cover. And go look at it for your socket when you're done. So there's a couple of 12 mils down here. set and Allen key set was on sale at Canadian Tire. So I'm a bit of a tool junkie as you guys will discover as time goes on. The tool I need I have it. A couple number twos up in the front here. Let's go ahead and pull those out. this easy for us. Let's see, I don't believe there are any wires in this console other than the ones other than the ones that are attached up here for the cigarette lighters. But I was hoping to be able to just pull this out. I was hoping it is the wires. Let's not pull on wires. More number twos. starting to move a little bit better. There we go. There we go. Stuck on a couple clips, guys. There we go. Easy. We found our socket. Absolutely wonderful. So continuing on, I got a little sidetrack there. You definitely see that's pulling. It's not exactly pulling evenly. I don't know if we have a seized cable. We'll investigate that as well. Uh, but we're going to do this bolt. We're going to do the assembly. We're going to disconnect one wire here. And once that wire is disconnected, um, this whole thing comes off. And we should be able to replace it, which is pretty, pretty simple in essence. cables are actually engaging guys like why would the e-brake assembly 
be so stubborn. Sounds like we're pulling stuff. They look a little bit long one to the other, but apart from that, I don't feel over the seas. They look like they're urethane coated, hard plastic coated to stop them from seizing. Button works on this one. Perhaps the mechanism works nicely on it as well. Again, guys, these are uh, this is a $150, $200 piece. Picked this up at the wrecking yard, less than $10. Uh, you, you can connect the, the actual the actual wires after the fact. Uh, I just went ahead and did them because I got the whole assembly off. It's not what was just easier to do that that way. But uh, typically, you would leave the handle in for even the service of this and uh, we'll just do it that way. This car is pretty original except for the maintenance that's been performed to it so I suspect uh, there hasn't been a lot done with, there, there has been a lot done with brakes but there, I, I don't think much has happened. That handle we've taken out is very original. In fact, I think I see remnants of the old handle right here. So that, oh. <laughs> that fell behind the seat, but that looked like the button that you press on to engage and disengage. I've reconnected the parking brake warning sensor. Switch. Probably not a sensor. I always put the bolts in just hand, a little bit hand tight before I start. Snug them all in, never tighten anything. Again, I'm, I'm, these videos are for your do-it-yourselfer types. Sometimes you, you get overzealous and you start tightening one down and the other one won't go in and then you're, you're fighting yourself. You're better off to run them all in and snug them all up at the end so this way it's super easy. So that's what we're looking for. I like a tight parking brake assembly. You can see there's not a lot of slack on those cables. Four clicks is what I go for on the lever. It is a matter of preference. And again, we are going to be checking the, uh, I'm going to go a little bit tighter just because I really like a tight parking brake. But, uh, Uh, that's working pretty much like it should now. So we're going to test rear brakes anyway. So if there is a cable that needs to be replaced down the road, we are going to be doing that. It's not, uh, uh, it's not going to uh, hamper anything. All right, so we've got airbag control unit. It doesn't look like it has too much schmoo on it. And uh, so today I'm not going to be reassembling completely because we have a bushing kit that's coming for the shifter knob assembly. Um, so we're going to leave that apart and we're just going to go ahead and reassemble this just so, just so we can move the car. I will put the additional parts in the trunk for now. Alright, so that's it for now. Um, Project Hyundai is coming together and I think uh, we're going to have a great little car here for $2,500 you know, $2, budget on the road. Uh, I think we've done pretty well. Um, I'm, I'm going to be uh, showing you guys what the final touches look like uh, and the rest of it. But there are some deals to be found out there. Um, with COVID, um, it's, it's eaten up a lot of the, this type of car for, for couriers and stuff. There are no more $500 cars that you can fix. This would have been a five dollars $600 car probably less than two years ago. But now it's a $1,500 car because people are buying them just to do deliveries with. So um, it's, it's certainly changing the market a little bit. But for a project car, if you're looking to, to build something or you're looking for your first car, 
and you're looking to do something uh, inexpensive, it can still be done. Uh, you can still get, still get wheels, you can still get on the road. All right, well, thank you very much. That's it for this episode. Thank you.